A few days ago, Apple, the biggest corporation in the world, has released the brand new three iPhones. iPhone 11, iPhone 11 Pro, and iPhone 11 Pro Max. If you know anything about me, you know I am an iPhone geek and I love iPhones. And yes, I will have eventually that iPhone in my pocket, but not yet. They will go cheaper in the next five or six months. A day after the release of the new iPhone models, one of my Facebook friends put on his Facebook such notice. If I know that you are on food stamps and see you with a new iPhone 11, know that I'm calling your social worker. I thought, well, I guess he's right. Because if you're on food stamps, it means that you don't make much money and you need assistance to feed yourself maybe your family and friends, and you shouldn't be buying an iPhone it's at least a thousand dollars each. Yes, they are that expensive. So I thought, yeah, he's making good point. But the longer I thought about it, the, the less comfortable I became with this assumption. How do we know that someone on food stamps who is using the newest model of the coolest phone ever did go off and buy that iPhone him or herself. Maybe it was her birthday and someone gave them a beautiful iPhone as a birthday gift. Maybe his mother or father were visiting from Poland and wanting, wanted to buy them a gift to remember them by. Why do we need to assume the worst of people when there are countless other ways of explaining what happened? Why would you assume that someone on food, on food stamps with a new iPhone in her hand is cheating the system? Why do we always assume the worst about people around us? Can't we assume something good about them? Have we become that cynical? Have we become that sour that we think everybody's cheating on everyone? It's so hard for us to rejoice when other people are successful, when other people are doing well, especially if we think that the other people are undeserving to be successful or undeserving to do well. Our jealousy and envy get in the way of simply being happy with them. It happens so many times, over and over again. I'm thinking of Pope Francis and how the man who was our Archbishop a few years back gets annoyed with Pope Francis every time the Pope says something happy and uplifting. Have you noticed that? The first document Pope Francis issued was called Evangelii Gaudium in Latin. In English it means the joy of the gospel. In this first encyclical, Pope says that the gospel needs to be a joyful message. If your preaching and living of the gospel is not joyful, you are not doing something right. Of course, our beloved late Archbishop of St. Louis had to criticize this document from the first day it came out. 
And then every time the Pope says something happy or lets other people be happy, the one whose name should not be mentioned gets in the media and says the Pope is wrong, we have to correct the Pope because the Pope is on the edge of heresy. How interesting that someone else's joy is causing such cynical reactions in us. In the Gospel story today, it all begins with Jesus having good time with sinners and tax collectors. And people who were observing that said, how come they are having so much good time? They shouldn't be having good time. It's a serious business. To which Jesus answers with three different stories. One about a coin, two about a sheep, and three about a lost man. And notice that at the end of each of these invented stories, Jesus says, rejoice with me, let's have party, because I found what was lost. After a sheep is found, the shepherd is inviting everyone he knows and has, has a big party. Rejoice. After a coin is found, the woman is getting all her girlfriends and says, let's have party. Rejoice with me. After the son comes back, the father says, let's kill the best fattened calf we have. Let's have party. Rejoice with me. And each single time, someone is unhappy. There is too much joy going on. You have too much of a good time. Be more serious. Why is that? I've been thinking all week, why do people react this way when someone is joyful? When someone is happy, why does it bother so many people? And then I thought, perhaps they were never truly happy themselves. Perhaps they never experienced the joy that comes from being loved the way they are. Being loved and accepted for free unconditionally. If you have never experienced that extravagant love, there is a danger you will become sour, cynical, and you will assume the worst of everyone around you. Because you have become so sour and sad yourself and the joy of others will drive you crazy. When your life is miserable, how can you be happy with those who are happy? And your life is miserable because you cannot believe that someone can love you the way you are. The first step to being happy, to rejoicing, is knowing that I am loved. Knowing that someone loves me precisely at this moment the way I am. Old, fat and wrinkled, yes, I am loved that way today. With all my illnesses, with all my drama, with all my trouble, I am loved today. With all the mess I have created, with all the mistakes I have done, with all the hurt I have caused, I am loved today. And that love comes 
free of charge. You know, Martin Luther was right. 502 years ago, in 1517, the main thesis of his Reformation movement was you can't buy love, you can't buy grace. Either you are loved or you are not. And in God's case, you are loved, period. Once you start believing that, once you realize that no matter how much of a prodigal daughter or son you are, God will love you in the deepest bottom of your misery. God will love you. Then there will be joy in your heart. Then you will be happy with those who are celebrating, having a good time, even if, God forbid, they are tax collectors or sinners. When you experience the joy of being loved, you will share the joy with others. And this is exactly where your homework begins. You can help others to experience joy of being loved without judging, without making assumptions, simply loving and accepting your neighbor as they are. Don't make assumptions that presume someone is doing something wrong. Love people the way they are. Why? Because you are loved the way you are. Rejoice. Don't get annoyed by those with new iPhones, with new cars, new husbands, or new wives. Rejoice, because love comes free. And you are loved, my friend, the way you are today. Amen.